Hi, uh, welcome to the session on CPA Financial Accounting and Reporting. Today's uh, topic is the adjustments due to adjustments in the financial books due to changes in accounting methods, accounting principles, and uh, um, any estimates, including error corrections. So we'll discuss in detail one by one uh, why the, uh, the changes take place in a reporting. Changes take place in reporting due to changes in estimates or changes in reporting entity or changes in accounting principles adopted by a corporate. And what is the impact of these changes in our financial statements? Whether these changes will affect our income, will affect our retained earning statement, will affect our balance sheet items like assets, equity or liability. And if it, if it affects, does it affect the prior period or will it affect in the future period or will it affect in the past as well as future? So let's see in detail. Number one, changes in accounting principle. There is a change in accounting principle. Okay. And say for example, um, replacement of one gap principle to the other gap principle. It's a change only in the principle. Like one uh, method to the other method. FIFO system to LIFO system, straight line to, you know, the, you know, reducing balance method. Changes in accounting estimates, like we um, estimated the life of a particular asset is say 10 years. So we charge depreciation using this estimation. But later on, we came to know that the life of this asset due to the advanced technology is only six years now. This we identified in second year. Already first year depreciation was charged using 10 years life. In the second year we decided that the life of this asset is estimated to be only six years from its purchase. One year is already charged. Okay, so the remaining life is only five years, including the second year. So second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, and sixth year. So these five years, how to charge depreciation? Yeah, that is in uh, going to be discussed in accounting changes, changes in accounting estimates. We'll also see that changes in reporting entity. So the entity, entity change from reporting entity as one type of entity into the other type of entity, like a uh, consolidated reporting uh, will become you know an uh, individual reporting entity or some individual reporting entities will become now consolidated reporting entity what is the impact of the same accounting changes accounting changes due to accounting changes here the principal changes or any exceptions in that case, you see that whether it is affecting only current approach, retroactive or prospective. Retroactive means retrospective. Means what? This will affect the past results as well as future. Current approach, only in the current period. Prospective, only in the future. So you can just write down in, in a simple terms, Current approach means only in the current period. Retrospective means it affects from the date this you know change took place, even in the future as well. Okay. Prospective. Prospective approach means the moment you recognize that this is the method from now onwards. So in future, the impact will be there, but not in the past. Current and future is prospective. Only current is a current approach. Past and current future 
is a retrospective aspect. Changes in accounting estimates. If any changes take place in the estimates, this will only uh, affect in the future. This, therefore, the reporting approach required is prospective approach. Means, from in, in my previous example, uh, a, a, an asset whose life is estimated at 10 years, say the asset value is 10,500, salvage value is going to be say $500. So 10,000 is the amount to be depreciated in 10 years time. And each year, the depreciation is $1,000. In second year, in second year, we estimated that the life of the asset is not 10 years, it is only six years from the date of purchase. So first year depreciation is already accounted. After accounting the first year depreciation, now the asset value is 9,500. And say for example, salvage value will remain same. This 9,000, the remaining amount is to be depreciated from second year onwards until sixth year. So second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, and sixth year, the number of years here is five. So this 9,000 is going to be depreciated in five years. That's called prospective approach. So the new depreciation is affecting only from second year onwards. Therefore, changes in accounting estimates with we use a, a prospective approach for reporting purpose. Changes in reporting entity like consolidation to you know, individual individual to so consolidation, we use retrospective, retroactive, retrospective. Now we understand that any changes in accounting estimates, the reporting approach is prospective. That is, in future transactions, we are going to change. Accounting changes, error corrections. So there might be some accounting errors, okay, which are not classified by accounting changes, some errors, right? It can be like, you know, instead of recording one entry, you know, one account you might have recorded in the other end. And also does not affect, does not, it may affect the, the uh, income of the prior period, okay? So you may need a, a special, treatment for that. Let's see some examples for that. Uh, error corrections. Uh, next. What we understand here is there are three types of reporting approaches for accounting changes, estimates and error corrections. That is prospective treatment, retrospective treatment or retroactive treatment and the current treatment. We'll discuss in detail one by one with the example. So here accounting changes, cumulative effect, cumulative effect of new principles is computed as the beginning of the period and it is included in the income statement. So it is already taken into account. Any accounting changes which affects only the current period it's been already accounted here. So you don't need any restatement for that. Okay, just only you need report a pro forma information that this what happened. Okay, like a commission received is recorded as interest received. Okay, purchase of printing and stationery is recorded as a tools consumed. Both are expenses, but this heading is different. So that doesn't affect only in the current treatment you can change it. Now let's see error corrections. Error corrections. Okay, you need to restate prior year financial statements. Okay, with the principles and also it may affect uh, retained earnings. It is a retro. So retro means you will have a cumulative effect, past as well as future. And prospective, okay, so any prospective like that, it doesn't require any restatement. And also you don't need pro forma statements. 
change will take place in the current period and the future financial statements. Remember that depreciation in third year, we recognized in third year that the, the estimated life of the asset is only six years, means two years already completed. In third year, we recognize that estimation. So third year, fourth year, fifth year, and sixth year. One and two are in the past. Okay, so these do not change prospectively, third year onwards, in the current period and in the future. Current period and in the future. That's called prospective treatment. So, uh, any changes in the estimates, you don't have any retrospective application. Clearly, it will take only the effect from current period onwards. Current and future. Once you recognize that estimation, you make adjustments in current period and follow the same in the future period as well. So it's called only prospective. Changes in the estimates, like it can be a, 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 a revenue, it can be a depreciation expense, etc. Um, changes in estimates, changes in estimates do not result in a retrospective adjustment again. Retrospective adjustment. Okay, it will be accounted only prospectively. Please do remember. And changes in estimates. Sometimes it is very difficult to, to estimate. Therefore, an evaluation is required. Okay. An evaluation is required to, to make changes in the estimates. So when properly an asset is evaluated, then only you can account it. And it has to be, uh, as per the gap rules, the change has to be, account, you know, not for the company's discretion, it is to be as per gap rules, generally accepted accounting principles. I'll say for example here, we have an asset cost of 30,000, accumulated depreciation for three years, it was 9,000, or the value is 21,000. We estimated that the future life of this asset is five years from now. So this amount divided by five years. So annual depreciation now is going to be 4,200. Earlier, the depreciation for three years was charged 9,000, means yearly depreciation was 3,000. So the life of this asset was treated as 10 years. So 30,000 divided by 10. So each year, we charge 3,000. 9,000 was the depreciation charged. Now the net book value is 21,000. Now we change this life is not 10 years, but it is only eight years. Among eight years, three years already completed. Three years depreciation was already charged. So the future period is of five years. So any estimate, changes in estimate should affect only prospectively. So prospective effect. So it is not going to disturb the amount of depreciation which is already charged, but it will uh, have an effect in the future year depreciation. So 21,000 divided by five is 4,200. So we need to record depreciation of 4,200 from fourth year onwards, current period and in future. Now we understand how the changes take place when there is a change in estimates. Remember again, any changes in estimates should, should report prospectively, means from current period and in future as well, but not retrospectively, it is prospectively. Changes in reporting entity, okay. Changes in reporting entity, uh, say suppose, an entity changes from, uh, you know, individual co companies to consolidated company or consolidated company to individual company. Okay, so here consolidation. Consolidation means we will prepare combined financial statements. 
previously we used to consolidate now we are preparing individual so the knocking off the companies between subsidiaries and parents and all were there here so now we are deciding to provide individual presentation in that case only that you know uh, uh, the the what we call the nullifying the transactions between uh, different countries won't, co companies won't be there like you have a parent company transaction and you have a, a subsidiary company transaction and here we have total so we used to have like a uh, loan to loan to loan from so we used to nullify them here in the total but when you preparing individually so obviously they're all to be there sold to purchase from investment in invested by so this kind of transactions will be there when you prepare the individual financial reports that's the only thing what you need to take care of errors errors in the principles okay so the accounting principles uh, may be different uh, not uh, uh, recorded as per generally accepted so sometimes uh, not maintain in good faith okay or can be mathematical miscalculations or the omission of a particular data of like recording an income or an expense under defer or accrual method so when we correct any errors we uh, see the prior period adjustment so we see the cumulative effect of the error okay so there will be a correction even on the prior period financial statements when we have a correction in the prior period in financial statements we we see that the prior period income would have been affected because of this error so can we go and change this yes then it is called as retro retro okay retroactive so in that case we need to go back and adjust the previously reported amounts so the companies will have to recognize these amounts errors and you know make adjustments accordingly accordingly and these errors remember very important point is the net of taxes net of taxes net of taxes for each period presented so we'll have to see in the retained earnings it is going to be adjusted in retained earnings you cannot go back and uh, uh, adjust pnl account of last two years or three years these are all accumulated in your retained earnings therefore your retained earnings account is going to be adjusted but remember it is net of tax so any uh, errors you found that can be a deferral income or accrued expense uh, you see the net effect of the tax and check that amount or adjust that amount in retained earnings statement so the companies adjust financial statements of each prior period okay for that effect the correcting the error so in this case what you need to do you need to see the previously issued financial statements they are to be restated adjust in the retain earning statement okay so the correction should be done in a retain earning statement the very important point is that you you begin with the current year retain earning statement the beginning amount in retain earning statement should be adjusted with a net of tax after tax adjustment we'll see some uh, uh, um, important uh, examples on error correction and the procedure here for the prior period restatement is exactly the retrospective adjustment okay so retrospective adjustment but only the terms what we use is restatement so it is going to be adjusted in your retain earnings so let's see the error analysis once you identify that there is an error accounting principle or whatever the error is identified and see the impact of the same go and adjust 
of, of the retail earnings statement with the net of tax. Okay, so headers sometimes may affect only the income statement, not the balance sheet items. Okay, it is maybe due to misclassification of items within the income statement, like interest revenue is recorded as sales revenue. So interest revenue is part of your income statement. Even sales revenue is also part of your income statement. Only the heading is changed. Instead of recording as interest revenue, we recorded and clubbed in sales revenue. The final impact on your net income will remain same, nothing, no change. So we just need only correcting entry. Uh, 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 only the corrections moving from here to here, that's it. But you don't need any kind of special adjustment for that. Okay. Let's see here, some more examples. Uh, affecting both income statement and balance sheet. Some errors may affect uh, both income statement as well as the balance sheet for example we have an interest expense which is understated by two thousand dollars so there is an interest expense of two thousand dollars which is ignored so what happens here your eb ebt will increase by two thousand say twenty two thousand okay if this interest is being accounted it would have been twenty thousand because interest amount was not deducted from EBIT, therefore now EBT is 22,000. Now you pay tax or at the rate of say, for example, 40% on this, it is going to be $8,800. It should have been like this, 22,000 EBIT minus 2,000 interest and your EBT supposed to be, your EBT supposed to be 20,000. There is a tax of 8000 so your after tax profit is after tax profit is 18000 but here the after tax profit is is it this is 12000 12000 and here it is 13200 13,200. See, there is a prof there is a difference in the profit. There's a difference in tax because of the understatement of interest expense. Any expense is understated. Any expense is understated. Profit before tax will increase. Any expense is overstated. Profit before tax will be understated. So make sure you see that any expense is understated or overstated. And what is the impact on your EBT? Thereby you can see even in the change in the taxes. Now we understand that here, the interest expense is understated. As we know that interest is a non-operating expense. Uh, therefore, your EB, EBT, income before tax will be overstated because one of the expenses is not recorded, understated. And income tax, income tax, will also have an impact, okay? If the tax rate is say 30%, you will have an impact on the income tax as well. Not only that, you will have an impact on even profit as well. Net income will be overstated by 1,400. Why? Because this 2,000 expense was not recorded, therefore, the income increases to the extent of 2000 times 1 minus tax rate. Your income tax is overstated because one of the expenses is not recorded. You are paying more income tax, which is overstated expense into tax rate. Yeah. And we'll have even the impact of the same in retail earnings as well. Why? Because your net income will be now transferred to retained earnings. So your retained earnings will be overstated by $1,400. Thereby, your income tax liability 
will increase by $600, your current liability. Income tax expense will increase, income tax liability will increase, or if you pay cash, your current asset will decrease. If you paid already this cash or this income tax, your current asset decreased. Not supposed to be decreased, in fact, because of understatement of this expense, uh, we paid it. If not paid, your current liability will increase. So there will be a chain of action, okay, impact on various other components due to change in the, the uh, error, the, due to change in the uh, amounts, like errors we can say. Okay. Interest expense is overstated by 2000. Income before tax will decrease, thereby income tax expense is understated and net income is also understated because it is overstated, expense is overstated. Thereby you will have retained earnings uh, and equity also will be there. So in the errors, okay, you need to check the journal entries properly, whether debit and credit are taken care or not. Okay. So we'll have to see whether debits and credits are properly recorded. Determine the correct journal entry once you find that there is an error. So to make corrections, correct journal entries to be passed, the appropriate debits and credits. Once you pass the journal entry, see that what are all the you know uh, impact of this uh, corrected journal entry. Okay. So in the other accounts or financial statements, etc. Now, <clears throat> let us find some, you know, uh, examples and their impact, okay, by preparing correct journal entry. So first of all, we will analyze an error, see the correct journal entry, and see the impact of the same by passing journal entry. Let's go with some examples. Yes. In the year 2007, a company received $10,000 as a prepayment, prepayment renting a building to another company. The, the error, there was an error because the accountant has recorded this transaction as debit cash and credit debit cash and credit rent revenue but as it is mentioned very clearly it is a prepayment okay it is for 2018 next year cash account is okay fine but it is not rental revenue it has unearned revenue in fact it is a revenue received for the Future. What happened here? Our net income increased. Cash is taken care. Cash account is there. But our uh, rental income increased. So your net income will increase. At the same time, your unearned liabilities, unearned revenues decreased because it's not accounted. Now let's uh, see the correct entry. Correct entry is retained earnings debit, rental revenue credit. So rental revenue was uh, credited earlier on un rental revenues on un rental revenue not rental revenue on un rental revenue credit this amount was there in the profit therefore we are debiting retain earnings account therefore retain earnings account will be reduced and this is on un revenue on un rental revenue now now let's see here the failure of accrued revenue okay see we we have an accrual of interest revenue. Okay, this earned, earned but not received. Earned but not received. Okay, so here the when the cash was received by company, debited cash and credited to interest revenue. Okay, interest revenue. So what happened here? Actual entry should be what? Actual entry should be. Yeah interest revenue debit and on and uh, uh, earnings oh, sorry interest revenue debit and retained earnings credit actually it did not it did not uh, uh, record accrual interest 
accrual interest. So what happens here? Your interest revenue is reduced. Uh, reduced or increased? Increased. Okay. Therefore, it has to be accounted, interested to be received. Yeah. Now, the next uh, um, example is $1,000 for insurance coverage okay, for 2018, next year. The original entry, debit insurance expense and credit cash account. The original entry passed by the accountant. The error was discovered at the end of 2008. This was all, happened in December 2007. Then we recognized this in or, or realized in 2008. So it has to be retro. It has to be retro. So insurance expense actually belongs to 2008 but was already expensed in 2007. So what happens there? The retained earnings was understated. The profit was understated to that extent. So let's see the correct entry. So the correct entry will be insurance expense debit, retained earnings, credit. Insurance expense debit, retained earnings, credit. Okay. Now let's see some more examples. Errors in ending inventory. See, actually, for ending inventory and beginning inventory, any errors take place ending inventory and beginning inventory will have an impact on cost of goods sold. Because cost of goods sold equals to beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory. Remember here, if beginning inventory is overstated, if beginning inventory is overstated, cost of goods sold will be overstated, thereby gross profit is understated, net profit is understated, retain earnings is understated. Likewise, if beginning inventory is understated, cost of goods sold is understated, Gross profit will be overstated, net profit will be overstated, retail earnings will be overstated. So the impact of understatement and overstatement of beginning inventory will have an impact on cost of goods sold, gross profit, net profit and retail earnings as well as the tax. Now we know that uh, the errors in not only ending inventory also beginning inventory will have an impact on our cost of goods sold thereby on gross profit, net profit, retail earnings and not only that even this ending inventory will have an impact on our current assets as well as current ratio and working capital. Overstated, understated will have an impact on all these uh, components. Say for example, on 31st December, the inventory was recorded as 50,000, but we later discovered that the correct inventory value should have been 55,000. So the ending inventory in 2017 was undervalued, understated by 5,000. Supposed to be 55,000, but understated by 5,000, recorded only 50,000 in the financial books. Therefore, this has to be now corrected by, by pushing the inventory by 5,000 and increasing the retain on, increasing the retain earnings by 5,000. Why increase? Because it was, ending inventory was understated. When ending inventory is understated, your cost of goods sold will be overstated. When cost of goods sold is overstated, gross profit is understated, net profit is understated, thereby retain earnings is understated. Therefore, now we are increasing our retain earnings by $5,000. So inventory is to be taken into account and retain earnings is adjusted accordingly.
errors in uh, purchases, inventory and credit, not paid at the year end and recorded this transaction incorrectly as 17,000 although the invoice price of the inventory was 27,000. So it is inventory is understated, inventory is understated, it's supposed to be 17,000 and it is recorded as only Oh, sorry, it, it's supposed to be 27,000, but it is recorded as only 17,000. So there is a difference of $10,000. Your profit, your profit increased. Therefore, it should be adjusted in retained earnings by booking an accounts payable of $10,000.